What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're gonna be tying up an Amy's Ant, but in a boutonniere style. This here is a kilt pin. Uh, looks like an oversized safety pin. It's about two and a half inches. I've simply bent it out of the way, um, the point so that I could get it in the vise. And I'm tying these up for a, a friend uh, on social media for his wedding. And he wanted boutonnieres for all his groomsmen. So we're gonna be using some Semperfly. This is some classic wax thread in a 12 aught. Um, you could also use a 6 aught when you're dealing with foam, but I'm gonna show you a few tricks to uh, avoid cutting the foam with your thread. And so we'll go ahead and lay down a nice thread base and back here towards the, the rear, I wanna make sure I have a nice little tag in there. Uh, it also gives something for the foam and the thread wraps over the foam to grip to. So they don't really make foam cutters for sizes this big. This is, you know, a little bit larger than what I normally fish, but um, what I did is I basically used the gap of the, the open end of the pin there, and then I'm going to loosely wrap over this and work my way up kind of concaving it around the um, safety pin or kilt pin um, shank. Sorry, I'm, I'm using hook terminology here, and this is not a hook. So um, as I go back down, I'm going to do a little bit tighter wraps, and then here towards the rear, I'm going to you know do about five to six wraps to lay down a nice thread base and then we will do some cranking securing wraps. I'll work my way back up again. This is a lot of foam to wrap around a little skinny um, shank. I don't, I don't know what else to call it. It's, I'm so used to it. So we're gonna use some uh, Z cement here and uh, we're going to just apply that to our, where we put down that thread base. Brush it on the underside here because as they're pinning this in their lapel or on their kilt, I don't want it to slip around on them. Uh, so that we this way it won't twist around and so then I'll work my way back down um, A little bit tighter wraps each time I go down really just cleaning up this underbody same technique I will use um, when doing a traditional Amy Zand on a smaller But we just don't have as much foam to condense and you really don't want to condense it when you're fishing it because you want it to float more now we're, we've I've already trimmed this I matched it on the width and I'll go ahead and do the same technique laying down about four to five loose wraps. And then as I progressively wrap up to about 10 or 12, I'm gonna do tighter wraps. That way um, you're gonna have a little bit of a thread seep out, but you're not gonna cut your foam and you're not gonna create a brittle point. So when you're fishing this, I do the same technique with uh, rubber legs as well. And for the legs on this, these are just a medium barred. Um, it's green on green. And uh, we're, we basically are gonna tie it in at the midway point, wrap it around. The way I like to do this is hold the leg, wrap it around my thread, and then pinch it in my left hand as I bring my thread up and over, I can kind of position it into place. And then I'll do about three or four wraps over it. And then we can, you know, always manipulate these legs, but we're gonna be moving them out of the way. Uh, so I don't wanna really get them in perfect position at this point. Make sure you steal one of your wife's hair clips. Um, uh, whenever I see these at the grocery store, I always pick up about, they come on a five pack and I seem to always use it. And you're gonna really have a fun time trying to get these out of the way when it's this big, but I'm going to get my thread out of the way and then use this hair clip to uh, secure it to the vise. And sometimes these legs cooperate and sometimes they don't. So I'm not gonna make you suffer through um, this process, but let's see if I got it there. And now that didn't want to go. Let's start over again. And all you want to do is just uh, bring them all back, get your foam, and then work it through. Yeah, I got a leg here that's being stubborn. So anyway, the next step is we're going to be tying in our, our body materials. And for this, we're going to be using some of this uh, Whiting Farms Grizzly. This is a platinum. It's for a special occasion, so I figured let's get it out and use it. I can also do about three ant bodies per feather because these things are so long, so that makes it really nice. And then we're gonna go ahead and prep this. Um, I'm gonna trim off this little part here that's got a little bit of that skin, and we'll just uh, pull the fibers back, stripping them, and expose the stem here. And that's what I'm gonna tie in. I'm gonna tie it in with the grizzly side, the color side uh, facing me at this point and uh, we're going to use for the ribbing you can use wire um, for most of my dry flies I like to use tippet uh, I just I have extra and when you're putting on six or seven eight uh, X I don't think I've noticed a difference in weight between that and wire I just uh, try to use it up and think it's lighter 
but we can get more specific and weigh them but that takes time and i'd rather go fishing so i just use it but you can also use wire uh, this is just a medium olive uh, chenille here and i'm going to expose the core of this uh, chenille by just doing what we did with the feather pull the fiber the fibers off and expose that core that way we can tie it in and I, I always like to leave a little bit of space anytime I'm tying in a stem. That way I can orient the chenille. I can um, figure out where I'm going to wrap it. Same with the, the, the feather. That way I can get a practice wrap or a practice quarter turn in before the, fed, the fibers start laying down. Um, and then we will get to uh, wrapping this body now. I'm going to lay down a little bit of super glue just kind of to make this a little bit durable. Because I figure the guys are going to be handling this and moving it around. And the first trap, I kind of want to get around um, and divide these legs. Uh, just because of the size, I can do this. Normally, I just wrap the chenille in front of these and call it good. But with the, the size of this, I've got a little bit of room here. And this is sometimes what I do on the, uh, like, you know, the chubby Chernobyls. Um, and so I'll just orient that. And then my next wrap, of course, will be in front of those legs to push them back so that they're uh, extending out uh, perfectly and then we will just do touching wraps um, I'm trying to do it as tight as I can uh, almost overlapping at this point and we want to save a little bit of room uh, so don't go all the way up to that uh, clothespin we kind of have a restricting uh, little notch there and that's where we're going to be ending the fly so we got to factor in the the head of this and so I'll just do some in front and behind wraps clean that up, snip it out, and then we will move on to the hackle. So the next step is we're going to grab this hackle and uh, we have a little bit of stem exposed so I can see which way it wants to orient uh, easier and it's going to be this way. So I'm going to do a wrap right there underneath the foam, uh, try to get it as close to as possible to that. Um, you can even pull back on the foam at this point, just don't pull too hard. I'm going to do a wrap in between those legs and then advance in front of it and I'm just uh, spinning my vise here. It makes it a little bit easier. And uh, we're about halfway up. And I'm following the chenille because I think that it lays down a little bit nicer. And then as we get up here, it looks like I did not do a half hitch. And so my chenille started to come undone because my turn on it came undone. Luckily, our hackle trapped it. So make sure you do a whip finish uh, or a half hitch before you do that. But for this... It worked out perfect and that hackle's pretty strong but we're going to rib it anyway and then we'll trim that out i'll trim out this little tag here that uh, came undone and we are golden and that's why i also laid down the super glue so um we'll clean up this little section here and then i'm going to rib it with that uh, tippet uh, making sure to go opposite on my wraps than i did uh, when i uh, palmer wrapped the hackle around the hook shank in a spiral uh, uh, orientation up the hook shank, which is palmering. And then I will zigzag this through and making sure to cross uh, wrap this so that uh, the hackle is now bulletproof. And then a little trick, I've got plenty of room here. I'm going to do about four wraps to make sure that tippet doesn't come undone. We have a, in the rear, uh, the stem and the, the tippet was super glued in um, as well as tied in. And so... Um, then we'll just simply lay this over. If you're doing a smaller fly, you could trim out your hackle so it lays flatter. Um, but we got plenty of hackle on here and plenty of room for bugginess. And so I'll just fold this over and squash some of those hackle fibers down um, to the sides. So um, a little trick when you're dealing with foam and trying to ramp up your thread, just lay down a little super glue. Don't let this uh, super glue go away because I use plenty of it when we're doing these flies. Uh, especially when I don't have to worry about how much it's going to weigh. And then that way as we are trying to secure this foam, uh, normally if you jump backwards, it will slip off. Um, we're not going to have that issue once you lay down a little bit of glue. So for the underwing on this, we got a little creative. We're trying to match uh, a specific color scheme. And so this is some Semperfly fat Flash, uh, the crinkled dark green. This is... One of my favorite uh, flashes because it, it looks to me peacock um, colored, but not you don't have like three or four different colors mixed in. It's just one color, uh, and I really like that. And so I'm gonna. It's super super long too, by the way. And so I'm gonna actually fold it in fourths and then tie it in. 
um, similar to how I did the legs, uh, wrap it around my thread. And notice how I'm only tying it in a third of the way, um, only utilizing a third of my space there. And I'm going to make sure it's kind of fanning out to each side. Um, that's because we're going to make a custom color blend. I'm also going to add in now some uh, royal blue. And these are not as long. This is a different brand. Um, I think I got these from Hairline. And they basically about, we're taking eight to 10 strands and I'm gonna fold it around. We're just really trying to create a really nice underwing. Uh, for a normal Amy's Ant, I would do one underwing uh, and go very sparse on the flash. I wouldn't do three layers like we're gonna do here, uh, but that's uh, different size, different proportions and uh, not as much fun. I mean, we use them to fish, so. Uh, the last color we're going to use is kind of a olive gold. I, I, I apologize, I don't have the color in front of me. And I actually took it out of the pack and it was just a loose crystal flash. But this just matches the kilt he's going to be wearing. And uh, to the best of my ability of what I have available. So we got those three colors of flash. I'm just going to pull them up. Notice how I tied them in almost in three different segments progressing forward. I'm going to trim them roughly uh, half the distance of the butt end here and let them just make sure we have got them nice and fanned out. And that looks really nice. So um, also make sure that you don't uh, cut your rubber legs when you're monkeying around with any of this. Uh, that's uh, happened to me plenty of times. The next thing we're going to tie in, this is some uh, deer hair. Make sure you clean the under fur out, get rid of any of the uh, loose hairs, the smaller hairs, and we're gonna go ahead and throw it in this uh, this new hair stacker here, and it fit in really nice, and I'm gonna give it a few tap, tap, taps here on my workbench. Uh, and this is stimulator deer hair from uh, Nature Spirit. We got a couple butt ends in there, but this is a lot of hair for this fly, so uh, I think we're good here. And I'm going to orient it um, right here on the top here. And so it's almost as long as the crystal flash at this point. Now remember when we tied in and we flare it, it's going to go a little bit shorter. And I'm going to do looser wraps right back here towards the where, where it's intersecting the crystal flash. And then tighter wraps up towards the what would be the, the head or the eye. And uh, make sure it's fanning out nice. Make sure my proportions are there. I'm going to lose a little bit of hair just because this thing is so huge. I'm, I'm trying to maximize the amount of hair and then just come in here and trim these butt ends out. And uh, it's, it's actually a fun challenge to really tie flies a lot bigger than you normally uh, tie them for fishing. It, it gives you a new perspective on proportions and, and I mean it's all the same process, but. You know, we're, we're using about the amount of hair here would be for maybe four uh, Amy's ants that I would be fishing. And we used a whole lot of foam. We used, you know, a lot of hackle. And, you know, normally I'd look at this head here and be like, this thing is huge. But uh, proportionate wise for this pin, it, it actually is right on in my opinion. So um, next step is we're going to tie in the red on the um, kilt and uh, I'm going to use some just micro chenille here and tie it in uh, working my way so that the thread is going to end up uh, right where it's at now and just lay down a little bit of glue to make this uh, really durable I don't want it shifting around again and then the next step is I'm going to advance this uh, crystal chenille um, up towards the what would be the eye and uh, then I will spiral it backwards um, towards where our wing intersects into this head and uh, doing it with it uh, about touching wraps here. You could also use a lot of products for this particular pattern uh, that, uh, you know, would be awesome for fishing or awesome for, you know, if you're doing a boutonniere, matching pretty much any colors that the brides uh, wants you to match. So. Um, there we go. We just cut that, uh, tied it off, and then I'm going to fold back my uh, top layer of foam here, and we're going to secure it on the first three wraps. I'm not going super tight, and then I'll start cranking now. That Laying down that those first few layers of thread really, really, really help with not cutting your foam. I'll go ahead and inspect it. The next step is we're going to add some uh, uh, two more sets of legs up here, and so I'll just do the same thing, uh, pinch it around my thread, 
uh, bring it up as I'm pinching it with my left hand, bring it towards the fly, orient it where I need it to go, and then of course wrap around, making sure to go right in the same position every time so that we're not tying down extra foam, um, we're not tying down you know, part of the front leg in, in a way. And we're gonna add a, a red tag on this, a uh, hot spot if you will, and then we will just do a really, really, really fun whip finish. Uh, I don't have one of those large whip finish tools. I need to probably get one. I've always wanted one. And so I'll just kind of take my tool here and wrap it up around, just like we were doing a wrap, making sure to come around and not trap that leg on the opposing side. And then I'll just secure that, give it a little counter uh, twist back towards me, making sure it's nice and in there. I'll come around with a second, um, uh, uh, not here same process just bring it up and around and then finish it here and then kind of tighten it by wrapping it around the uh, shank there I'll trim it out and now we're almost there now it comes time to just trim this I'm just going to notch this right here with a uh, angle and then I will use the angle I just created and match that uh, just going a little bit larger here and then come on the opposite side and then the last part is we got to just trim this head and I'm going to do it about there and then notch these heads um, which I like to do in case uh, you know I think it makes it look more lifelike and I think it skates really well across the foam or across the top of the water as you're uh, stripping these so last step is we're going to trim the the legs here and just try to get them all equal don't dull your scissors by trimming uh, the pin end that's sticking out and uh, there you go. We just tied up a Amy's Ant Boutonniere. Uh, this would be like a, shoot, a size 4 aught maybe. And I bet you this thing would float even on this pin. So um, last step is, uh, since we bent out the tag end of this, the pin part, I'm going to bend it in just a little bit more, make it easier on the uh, people that are going to be putting these on. And then we'll just go ahead and inspect it. Man, that's going to look killer. And so a lot of fun using techniques we've already used. So uh, check it out, tie some up, and give some to some friends getting married.